Good morning. It's another morning here, and we are taking up Nehemiah. It's been a lovely meditation so far. At least I've enjoyed it. We are in chapter four today, and it's always interesting to to take up every chapter in this book because every chapter is a new is turning over new things along the way here. So, good morning. It's it's a beautiful morning. I, I give thanks to the Lord because of the energy that I have, and then we're able to take this up, this chapter, chapter four, and, and, and look at some various interesting things. And as I said before, the, the reason why Nehemiah is so important is because of the fact that it is very apropos for today. It has the same enemy playing out, our hearts are still the same, and God's heart is still the same as well. So with that, let's get right into it here, and I'd like to ask God for help. Well, let's get right into it here, Nehemiah chapter 4, and so let's jump right over into that right here. This is where the active work is going to be going on now with Nehemiah. It says, but when it so happened, when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish, stones that are burned? Now this is exactly why Nehemiah is here because of the fact that You know, he realized his brethren weren't, weren't holding forth the form of worship. And this is exactly what these enemies says. It says, will they offer sacrifices, right? And so this is something underneath it all. The enemy does not want us to worship God in the proper fashion and give God the honor and the glory. And they're going to do everything to keep from that wall of separation from, from going. So... Let's move it on down. It says, now it says, now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him. He said, whatever they build, if even a fox goes up against it, he will break down their stone wall. You know, and the enemy is using different tactics. Here, this is mocking. It's ridicule. You know, it's interesting. I will say that when I was a young lad or whatever, going to school, I can say that the neighbors knew that my dad and the family were believers. I wasn't necessarily out preaching, nothing like that. I was probably hiding my light more than I needed to, should have. And yet the neighbors were able to mock. And interesting enough, while I got the mocking on the school bus, why it was something that the mocking probably went on in the homes because there was a light in our home. My dad and mom were were bringing forth the, the, the beauties of the Lord Jesus along the way. And so... It's, it's just something to see that mocking is indeed something that is used of, of the devil, of the enemy as well. So what's, what's he say? What's the first thing that Nehemiah does here in, in verse 4? It says, Hear, O God, or our God, for we are despised. Turn the reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity, and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. You know, interesting enough is this is a this is classic, classic Nehemiah here, where, you know, we see here, in fact, I'm going to pop this screen over here as well, is this is Nehemiah right here. And every time the enemy attacks, Nehemiah just offers up a prayer to the Lord, you know? It's not his battle. It's not his battle. It's God's battle. And you can see that over and over and over as we come through here is that when there is an attack that goes on, he just offers up prayer to God. And are they lengthy prayers? Not what we have here recorded. They're not lengthy prayers. They're just short prayers of what we got recorded here. So it's very interesting to see that this is how Nehemiah operates. And this is why it's good to kind of understand this to say, huh, that's how he's doing it. That's how he's doing it. Is is that a, is that something how I should do it as well? So let's just jump back into our scripture here. So he built the wall, and the and the enemy and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height, for for the people had a mind to work. I, I love little phrases like this. 
for the people had a mind to work, right? And it's so beautiful is to see that, you know, within no time of, of Nehemiah coming on the scene, the people now are rallying together to build the wall. And again, the underlying purpose is separation, separation from the enemy, separation from the outside forces, and so that we could be technically separated unto. Now, in their day, it was separate unto the 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 altar and the sacrifices and Jehovah, where he put his name there. But but they had a mind to work. It's beautiful to see those phrases. Now, when Sambalat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed, that they became very angry. Now, Interesting enough, do you recall back in chapter, I'm going to refer back to this here, that they came at him, and it says, and they said this back in chapter 1. Yeah, yeah. They, they heard that he was come to seek welfare there, and you know they said something about, yeah, verse 17, chapter 1, verse 17. And let us build the wall of Jerusalem, we be no more approach. And and then he says, now when Sembalt and Tobiah and, and Ammonite, they all heard it, they laughed us to scorn, despised us, etc. So this is something that along the way, these guys are switching tactics. They're just switching tactics. One's mocking, one's revving, uh, running up and raise our, get our swords, just come fight them. And then there's a, hey, we want to build with you feature, right? So it's all coming at them very clearly. But here they become angry. This is very interesting. Again, Nehemiah is able to just go and just say, I'm just going to bring it to God. Because look at verse, look at verse, the next very next verse here. It says, and they conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God. And because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. There he goes. So now all of a sudden, now they're coming, they're not just mocking now, they're coming to attack. Nehemiah auto, automatically just offers up a prayer to God, right? It's just a beautiful thing. And now they set a watch day and night, all right? So that's that's a beautiful thing to see that it, faith goes into action. You know, it's oftentimes said, hey, you know, faith without works or work without faith, all this thing. If you want to see faith and works, right in the same mode of things, this is Nehemiah. Faith and works along the way. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing, and there is so so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversaries said, they will neither know nor seek anything till they come into their midst, till we come in their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. Ah, that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. They want to come into their midst and kill them and cease the work. That is what the enemy wants to do. Wants to come right in for the outside enemy, coming right on inside and stop the work. The enemy hates the work of God going on. So it was when the Jews had dwelt near them came that they told us 10 times for whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings, and I set the people according to their families with their spears, their swords, their spears, and their bows. Interesting enough, <clears throat> Nehemiah is very prudent, and he's learning how to position people exactly where the enemy is going to come in. And it's very notable that being very prudent in seeing where is the enemy going to come, but at the same time, turning right to God and saying, Lord, we need help. But at the same time, we want to go ahead and position people and and get things in a defensive mode. Now, stop for a moment, and I just want to bring forth a beautiful scripture. We probably don't dwell on this enough. Ephesians chapter 6, this, the, the armor of God, okay? It's a beautiful thing. The believer needs to be dressed in the armor of God. But sometimes we're out playing warfare and we are not acting like the soldier in Ephesians 6. What are we doing? 
Sometimes we're just arguing and we don't have the scripture that we're arguing with. We're not using the scripture to do that. Maybe we shouldn't be arguing. Maybe we shouldn't be running. We should be standing. If you look at Nehemiah, he's not, he's not challenging. He's not doing public debates. He's not doing public discourse. No, no. He's just turning to God. All he's doing is just turning to God. He's, he's getting attacked. He's not doing public discourse, nothing like that. Not to say public discourse and, and public debate is not correct. It's just the fact Nehemiah's operation is I've got a job to do and I'm going to just keep going it. I'm going to rally the people. God's going to make the move and God's going to take care of the business of defending us. And so that is important to see that sometimes in Ephesians 6, we start to lose some of our equipment. Sometimes we start running and taking care of business when it was it say in Ephesians 6? To stand. Wherewithal to stand. Okay? And this is what Nehemiah is doing here is positioning men behind the lower walls, the lower parts of the wall at the opening. So he's positioning men and they're setting the people according to their families. You know, that's another thing about God's word. And this is the way God's people operate. Families don't get separated. Families don't get separated. Very, very important to see families work together. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Again, this is what we read about in chapter one. What made Nehemiah go into crying before God for four months, five months in Nehemiah 1. It's his brethren. And right here, he's, ten, he's, he's basically bringing to mind the fact that, yes, remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, your houses. There's much to be cherished here, and that is beautiful to see that cherished. Let's turn back to the enemy here, chapter verse 15. And when and when it happened, when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. And so it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and war armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other held a weapon. Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built, and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Isn't that beautiful? You just take a couple verses there, verses 15, 16, 17, right, 18, and you see it's just very, very rich with meaning. In other words, everyone had a job to do. And this is the same thing. If you pop open into the New Testament and you look into Acts, you quickly find out that there are elders and there is deacons and there are praying. <laughs> There's women of prayer going on. <laughs> you can strike it all the way through. There is many things going on in the early church. It's absolutely beautiful. And there it is today. We all have our job. And there are, we're all positioned. You know, there's a Sunday school song that says, you in your small corner and I in mine. You know, sometimes you're in your small corner you're in, and I in mine. And this is what they're doing. They're all on the wall. Half of them are watching out for the enemy. Half of them are building. Seems to be all of them have a sword on one side and a trowel on the other. That's how the work of God is going on. And it needs to go on that way today too. There needs to be a careful lookout for the enemy and be able to defend against the enemy, but at the same time, be able to build up too together. So let's keep, let's go back to this here. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. You know, that's, that is something else. Knowing that sometimes we have to go out and work separately, but here's what he says. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us here, our God will fight for us. Know the fact that this is very, very common in warfare, that consolidation and coming together is critical. It's absolutely critical. And I want to speak to a trend that's going on today, 
And I'm not blaming anybody for this trend because I think the enemy has come in and scattered. And the trend is, is that is not to, not to meet together. And I think there's reasons for that. Obviously we had COVID that came on that scared people and rightfully so. But where it is, is I think there's discouragement. And, and basically we have that portion back in over in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter, you can look it up, Hebrews chapter 11 it is. And this is, and this is a, is a rallying cry right here. And you can just pick it up here in Hebrews. Sorry for the, this is literally on the fly here. Actually Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10 verse 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of Sam is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. This is Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. This is a common trend amongst believers, at least here in the United States that I can see. There are many that are just discouraged. They just put up with it. I'm done with it or whatever. And you know what? <clears throat> there is a right thing to be done with what the system is. There's a system out there that is not pleasing to God. And sometimes the system is such that you say, you know what, I'm just done with it. Well, you know what, that's maybe a time to move. Maybe there's something that God is having you, the, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you. Maybe there's something to say, maybe what I see is out there is not really what God's order is. Could that be possible? But don't stay home. Don't stay home. That's not God's will. God's will would have us to be together. And so why do I bring this all up? If you're jumping on in here, it's because of the fact that is in the time of warfare, the people were spread out. They're building the wall. They're all spread out. And Nehemiah says, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us to hear our God will fight for us. And I can say it's a privilege of mine. It's been a privilege of mine for, oh, I don't know, 25, but no, more like 35 years, 40 years, to be gathered unto the Lord's name. What does that mean? That means that I come, come with other believers that we meet expressly to the Lord's name. Take no other name. We honor the Lord Jesus. We want to honor him before the Father and try to meet according to the principles that we see of God's word in God's word. And the principles do follow, by the way. Principles are from cover to cover, from beginning to end in the scriptures. God has his principles. His methods and his means change may change for us a little bit, but the principles are still the same. And just like what Nehemiah is doing right here is they're meeting together, if you will, on, on, unto Jehovah's name. We pick that up. We pick that up in chapter one. Go back to chapter one and we'll see. That's what Nehemiah is concerned about. He says, you know what? They're not honoring the altar there and they're not honoring his name and the place. And so today we have the same thing. Today we have the same thing. We have the person of Christ before us and we have the place. And it's very exp explicit that we have these principles. The principles are still the same the methods are a little different. And so I think this is just beautiful as to is in, and you know, oftentimes, <laughs> sometimes I start a fire in the wood stove, you know, and I get anxious and I, I have all this fuel going on the, on the kindling and everything, just getting this thing started. And you know what? Sometimes I figure, ah, it's hot enough. I'm going to go ahead and break it apart now. Well, you know, I break it apart and the wood goes out. It's not an established fire. It's not an established fire. And I break it apart. You know what? It's it's difficult. And I got to put more more newspaper, more paper on there to get the fire going again. The wood has to be together to burn, right? It's the same thing on my barbecue, right? I got briquettes there. And if I want to start the barbecue briquettes, I've got to have them together. And the minute I get a little anxious and say, ah, okay, now it's time to separate. You know what? Things go out if it's not established. And here, we have, we have before us, we have, uh, we have that Nehemiah says, our God will fight for us. So we labored in the work and half the men held the spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. At the same time also, I had said, also said to the people, let each man and his servants stay at night in Jerusalem that they may be our guard by day, by night and a working party by day. So they come together and they're working together on a common thing, building they're watching, and they're ready to fight for what God would have them fight for. So neither I nor my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes, and 
except that the, everyone took them off for washing. Isn't that beautiful? There, there is called true, true dedication, and I so enjoy, I so enjoy seeing absolute dedication. You know, today people are dedicated to their sports. They're dedicated to their hobby. They're boating. They're fishing. They're they're whatever that whatever it is. And nothing's wrong with it because I enjoy a little along the way. But just so dedicated to that. How about being dedicated to the Lord? How about dedicated to what His mind is and His work is? So anyway, there's that. Hey, I got hey I got some I got some fun things here. I so enjoy visiting with people along the way. And I got a special, I got a special guest here. Let's bring him, bring him up here, here, see here. Yeah, there's Mike O'Brien. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for joining in. I love to see you. And, and you just let me know if you want to jump on. And this is, goes to anybody else. If you ever want to, if you ever want, if you enjoy Nehemiah and you want to join me on a, like a little interview thing or things like that, we can do that as well. But I, I just wanted to say hi and good morning to Mike. 